The armature of Blenrick III is rather simple. All the constraints have been placed strategically so that all the mechanisms can be hypodriven, and there is no need to have an extra control armature. The armature consists of a few basic layers. The main layer, which has all the controllers and the main deformation bones, a secondary deformation layer that has a few deformation compensation bones, a third layer with some mechanism specific extra bones, and the facial layer. There is also a layer that contains the dummy bones I created to be able to easily select the vertex groups of the muscle objects in the model. Anyway, the only bones that the user has to take care of are the controller bones of layer 1 and 2. In my opinion, one of the most important features that the rig has is the double IK spine. At first glance, the spine might look like a simple IK mechanism, but it is much more than that. If you take a look, there are two controllers that simultaneously produce an apparent IK behavior. It is much like a spline IK system, but it is actually a double IK system. See that there are actually two spines, one pointing upwards and another one pointing downwards. Their controllers interact with each other, allowing the double IK effect. The spine behaves as if it was one big IK chain, but actually each bone in the spine has its individual IK chain. The neck also uses the same technique. In this version of Blend Rig, I also added the possibility to control the spine in an FK way, just in case someone is not comfortable with the double IK system, which I think is much more flexible and precise. Blenrig also features IKFK controllers for the arms and legs. Targetless IK for the fingers. hinge controllers for the arms so that the hands can stay stationary while the rest of the body moves double pivoting foot system And it also features different locking options for the direction of the look of the character. There is also a fancy breathing system based on a mix of shrink wrap and lattice deformation. Finally, it also features a stretching system which can be used for animation, though in the case of Blender Rig 3 it is not its main function, as the rig is intended to be a realistic humanoid rig.
Until now, I have shown you all the main mechanisms of BlendRig, but I haven't shown you the feature that I consider the most significant of all. It's transferability. You may have or may have not realized that all the techniques used in BlendRig imply that the rigging is actually independent from the character's model itself. The only thing that connects the character with the rigging system is a vertex group called No Mesh Deform, just like in the Big Bug Bunny characters. So, if I was to delete my model and use a new one, all I would need to do would be to paint the vertex group called No Mesh Deform and I would have a brand new working character in a couple of minutes. Then, of course, I would have to weight paint the vertex groups that define the influence of the muscles if I wanted the rig to work with muscles. But that is just an extra feature that it is not part of the main mechanism. So, as you can see, the model is totally independent from the rig itself and that allows blend rig to be totally transferable. Now, you may be wondering about what would happen if you had a model with different proportions. Well, fortunately, that is all covered. Blend rig includes a great script created by Bart Crouch, which is called Armature Baker. Basically, the script bakes the pose mode of the armature into edit mode. But it also takes into account all the copy rotation, location and scale constraints that Blendrick has and also the stretch to constraints. Once the pose is baked, the script also resets the stretching values of the stretch to constraints and all the lattice objects that the rig may have. This delivers a new armature ready to be used in no time. Let me do a little demonstration of what this all means. First, I'll stretch the rig as the first step into making a new character. Once the proportions are alright, I'll make a copy of the deformation modifiers and then apply the original ones. Now I'll run the Armature Baker script and that's it. I'll erase the keys and re-enable the deformation modifiers. So, you can see that I have a completely new character ready to be remodeled or sculpted, but with a fully working rigging system that already fits the proportions of the model. This same technique applies for reusing the rig for a new model. Now, all that would be left would be to sculpt the model and once the model is finished, you would have to quickly edit the cage object in case any part of the model would have been left outside of it. So, as you can see, this system allows you to rig characters in just a couple of hours, you know. Just to let you know, I also have a quadruped version of BlendRig, which is actually for version 2.0, but can easily be upgraded to 3.0. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this demonstration, goodbye.